gentlemen. For centuries, birds of prey have captivated men with their strength, speed, and agility. Now, this is JR. JR is our American bald eagle. The American bald eagles can be found throughout the North American continent, and they are also known as the emblem of the United States of America. And we're going to watch JR make a short flight all the way back home. All right, JR, show them a flight. There you go. Very nice indeed. And a touchdown. Well done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a big round of applause. Our American bald eagle. Thank you very much. In the Middle East, the Arab Falcons would go out hunting in the deserts for prey such as pigeons, pheasants, and even the very large Kumara bustards. And joining us this afternoon, everyone, is our Arab Falconer, Mr. Abdullah. Very good afternoon to you, Mr. Abdullah. And as you can see, Mr. Abdullah is holding on to a falcon right now. And falcons are the preferred choice of birds by the Arab Falconers because these birds are known for their extreme speed. Now everyone, I would like all of you to take a look at this very unique glove that he's wearing. It's called a mangala. Tell you, can you tell apart the difference between this glove and mine? What's the difference? Fingers. Fingers, that's right. The fingers are exposed. The Arab falconers prefer to use the mangala, probably due to the very hot desert heat. Okay, so his fingers can get some better ventilation and they won't get too sweaty at all. Mr. Abdullah, I shall take the falcon off you now, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdullah. Everyone, take a good look at this gorgeous looking falcon that I'm holding on to. And do you notice that it's actually wearing something on its head right now? Yes? Now this is called a hood. The hood is placed on the bird's head to keep it calm. You see, falcons by nature are very high strung birds and they get excited very easily. So we will have to use the hood to cover the bird's eyes so that they don't get to see anything that would excite them. And the hood will only come out just before the hunt. Well, talking about hunt, we're going to see what our falcon will be hunting for us right now. In fact, uh, Mr. Abdullah is quite busy back there. He's searching for a prey. Any luck, Mr. Abdullah? Oh, still searching. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh that was your mangala. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, you just pulled out a, uh, a black pigeon. Very good. Now, very shortly, all of you are going to witness this falcon over here make an attempt to catch that prey Air. So while Mr. Abdullah positions himself right back there, I'm going to move up for some better height advantage. Now ladies and gentlemen, when I remove the hood, you will then get to see the falcon scan the area in search of the prey. And once it has spotted the prey, it will bob its head up and down to get a better focus. So everyone, keep your eyes on the bird. This is going to happen pretty fast. Oh, she's getting really excited. I'm going to remove the hood right now. There you go. Lovely eyes. She's scanning the area. Off she goes. Up goes the prey. Wow, that was very close. That was a knock, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now let's give the falcon a round of applause for doing that knock. Well, sometimes if they are unable to catch the bird of prey or the bird in the air, they will actually knock it first and then dive down and catch it again. Now, what he experienced was a knock, a very impressive knock. Excellent indeed. Well, nowadays, in the Middle East, falconry has become a very popular sport and it's practiced by the very rich and royalty. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, it has also gained a large number of committed falconers. It looks like uh, Mr. Abdullah is all set to head back home. Let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Oh, Arab falconer, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, look right up there. alive and well in the remote mountains of western Mongolia. 
the Mongolian falconers. Now they would go hunting on horseback with their very powerful golden eagles. And they would go in search of prey like deers, mountain goats, foxes, and even the very powerful wolves. So can you imagine how powerful an eagle has to be in order to subdue a beast like the wolf? Very impressive, right? Now this is Junior, everyone. That's his name. We're going to watch him make a flight all the way back home. Now look at the wingspan, everyone. Very huge wingspan. Let's give Junior a round of applause on white-tailed sea eagle. Thank you very much. In these modern times, falconry is practiced all over the world and by people from all walks of life. In fact, you can find falconry in the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. Now, besides the flights of hawks and falcons, which are very commonly used in falconry, eagles are also very popular. Well, you saw Junior earlier on. In fact, we've got another gorgeous looking eagle. She's right up there, everyone. And she's going to make a low flight directly above your head. So here she comes. One low flight down to me. Well done. Everyone, this is Achillea. And Achillea is our Batelier Eagle. The Batelier Eagles can be found in Africa. And these very gorgeous looking eagles have got a very unique name, Batelier. In fact, it's a French word and it means trapeze artist. You know why they have such a unique name? You see, when they fly, right, they fly in a very undulated pattern. Now, this is because of their very short tails. That is why they look like a trapeze artist, hence the name, the Batelier Eagle. Now, when uh, Achillea makes a short flight down to me, you will get to see how short her tail is. Okay, Achillea, one more flight right down to me, right over here, girl. She's gonna fly really low above her head, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be really fun. Oh, here she comes. Whoa, that was nice. There you go. And by the way, Achillea over here is a uh, female battle eagle. It's very easy to identify the male and the female. If you take a look at her lovely, gorgeous feathers over here, you'll get to see a little bit of gray. Now, for the females, it's all gray in color, but for the males, it's black. Okay, it's all black. So that is how we tell apart the male and the female. And in the wild, these birds are known to uh, hunt and kill snakes. Snakes make up a big part of their diet. And when they get uh, really excited, their face and their feet becomes bright orange in color. And we're gonna watch them make another short flight all the way up there to Sham. So for the folks on this side, you're gonna enjoy this. She's gonna fly really low above your head. Oh, there she goes. Well done, let's give Akilia a round of applause everyone, our Battle of Eagle from Africa, thank you. Besides the flights of eagles, hawks and falcons, the modern falconer would also fly his nocturnal counterpart. And when I say nocturnal, right, what type of a bird of prey comes to your mind? Owls, that's right. Now, the modern falconer would also fly owls. And this is to mainly demonstrate an owl's ability of silent flying. Now, I'm pretty sure the folks over here, over there, did not hear the owl fly low. All right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, owls have this ability to fly very silently without making any noise at all. You know why? Unlike other birds of prey, owls have this very soft edge at the tip of their feathers. So the sound frequency created by the wing flaps will be absorbed by those feathers. Well, that is not the only reason. There's another reason too. What do owls mainly hunt for at night? Mice and rats, rodents. Well, rodents come out at night, and rodents have very sensitive hearing. So, the owl has to be really quiet in order to catch its prey without being detected at all. There you go, another silent fight to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Balan, and Balan is our Malay fish owl. The Malay fish owls can be found throughout Southeast Asia and these very gorgeous looking owls have evolved to hunt for fish. So they're very unique by the way. Now talking about owls, right? There are more than 200 species of owls that can be found throughout the world. More than 200. But none of these owls can be found in Antarctica. And having said that, Moisey Balam over here, will now be joined by a parade of owls. Look all around here, everyone. Here they come, one by one. And we're going to watch Balam make a uh, short flight back home. Thank you very much, Balam. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start introducing these owls one by one. We're going to start off with this uh, very handsome looking owl with the handsome trainer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Rocky, 
and Rocky is our Malay Eagle Owl. Now, the Malay Eagle Owls can be found throughout the forested regions of Sumatra, Indonesia. Take a good look at Rocky. She's got a very adorable call over there. And would you like to hear something very impressive about him? Yes, well, he has been with us in the Jurong Bird Park for the past 33 years. Yeah, impressive, right? 33 years. He's older than I am. Alright, and uh, these owls can live up to about 45 to 50 years in captivity. And moving along everyone, we've got a very impressive looking Eurasian Eagle Owl. Now the Eurasian, oh look at that pose, getting the camera out, it starts snapping away. Now the Eurasian Eagle Owls can be found uh, throughout Europe and Asia, and they are the largest and the most powerful of all owl species. Look at that size everyone. Would you like to guess how old is Emmett? That's his name, by the way. Anyone wants to make a guess? 24. Sorry? 24. 44. 44 years old. Okay, how about the folks up there? How old, young lady? 10 years old. Okay, young lady, how about you? How old, do you think? Sorry? 25. 25. Okay. He is only two years old. Wow. That's right, two years old. Emmett was hatched and raised right here in the Jerome Bird Park at our breeding and research center, which is located right up there. Okay, he's only two years old. Now, for those of you who have not been there, you can do so right after the show. You will get to see more of our baby birds. Now, lastly, everyone, this is our very gorgeous looking Rika. And Rika is our Bengal Eagle Owl. Now, the Bengal Eagle Owls can be found in Bengal, India. There you go. Very, very beautiful looking owl there. That's just a very, very nice call too. Okay, everyone, let's have uh, one more look at our owls while they make their way back home. Let's give them another big round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay, right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some audience participation.